We're under no illusions about the challenges associated with this mission. 2017 is going to be another tough year for the valiant Afghan security forces and the international troops who have stood and will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder. Another year of tough decisions, 16 years on from the U.S. invasion, and Afghanistan is still mired in chaos and conflict. Now U.S. officials are weighing their options, talking about sending even more troops or cutting the funding. And is it going to require additional U.S. troops? I do believe it will involve uh, additional forces. Well, this has been done before, but the violence never stops. You want a war, you're going to get a war. You want to strike out against the Afghan insurgency, you want to fight them, you want to try and militarily destroy them, they're going to fight back. Violence is going to beget violence. That has been the answer that America has received. And so as long as NATO or the United, and the United States continues to pursue a policy of violence in Afghanistan, the violence will only get worse. We had 150,000 NATO and American troops that could not bring stability into Afghanistan. We could not expect it from a few thousands or a few hundred coming from the U.S. or the other NATO countries. Many people are saying, let the Afghans do the fighting. But that doesn't exactly seem to be working. According to a Defense Department report, the Afghan army is losing roughly 4,000 soldiers per month, many due to desertion and non-reenlistment. And the Islamic State is on the move. Now, about the money, some people say it's time to cut off the funding. They even have a bill in Congress. It's hard to justify continuing to spend money on a government with such a poor transparency record. According to one report, out of the past two Afghan governments, out of 83 senior officials, only one, the current president, Ashraf Ghani, fully complied with financial disclosure laws. The Afghan government itself is incredibly corrupt. The Afghan government itself is a kleptocracy, and it's been known for, uh, for, for a long time now. I mean, the Afghan government, key leaders, the vice president of Afghanistan, shipping tens and tens of millions of American dollars out of the country. We know that the Afghan government is composed, again, of warlords and drug lords, and that's what the American government has been doing for a decade and a half now. It's keeping this corrupt government in power. But on the other hand, severing the financial line could also bring severe consequences. So what's the answer? The war in Afghanistan has long been a matter of profound contradictions, a strategic necessity, and an unmistakable burden. There seems to be no proper way out of this stalemate. Caleb Maupin, RT, New York.